Hello there. In any other scenario, this procedure would have been stopped almost immediately. In fact, I wonder if they'd have ever been allowed to start it. Welcome to the show. And the evidence still keeps stacking up against the use of this procedure. But worse, it appears there may have been collusion between UK and US authorities to lock the information down and hope it never emerges. But it is coming out, and the numbers do not make pretty reading for the world's governments, the governments who push this relentlessly. And one contract about supplies between Israel and a major pharma company talks about the government acknowledging that the supplier's efforts to develop and manufacture the procedure are aspirational in nature and subject to significant risks and uncertainties. And further, the document goes on to say that the state acknowledges that the long-term effects and efficacy of the procedure are not currently known and there may also be unknown adverse effects. Were those that voluntarily rolled up their sleeves fully informed of this? And worse, did those that were forced to take it by law therefore really give their proper informed consent? And I wonder if all such related contracts like the ones the UK signed up to are in similar vein. And the binding term sheet that goes with this particular contract has been fully redacted, just about every line blacked out. Now, new research shows that the use of one variant of the procedure increases the risk of a miscarriage by 57 times and of a still or fetal death by 38 times. Is this part of the unknown adverse effects mentioned in the contract? And as more comes out, I wonder for how much longer the Tory and Labour tag team will be celebrating their party joining at the hip to push its use through. As one expert said, stopping its use immediately is a no-brainer. And on top of that, for some inexplicable and totally unrelated reason, birth rates are falling across much of the developed world. Richard. Councillors in Swindon have decided to find more spaces for defibrillators, especially in schools and nurseries. Why? Why on earth would you be wanting to increase the number of defibrillators in your borough, especially in schools and nurseries? You would swear that these councillors are expecting an increase in the number of cardiac events, especially in young people. But why would that be? Let's think this through. What would cause more cardiac events in the general population? Has something changed recently to warrant these precautionary measures being introduced? No, I, I definitely can't think of anything that would do that. Oh, maybe it's because of all those people who didn't have uh, an ex a certain medical intervention, an experimental medical intervention. Hmm. All those, you know, all those selfish people who didn't roll up their sleeves for, yeah. Oh, wait, that doesn't work. Hmm. I need to go away and think about this. Any ideas, you lot? Leave it in the comments. Jeff? Now, this is big. The Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, has basically laid his tackle on the line over this issue. He's come to an agreement with the EU over Northern Ireland, but no one knows what that agreement is. And it seems that even Brexiteer Steve Baker, the Minister of State for Northern Ireland, has been kept out of the loop. To the extent that he's been placed on resignation watch because it is feared this will be a Sunak sellout of the Loyalist community. Now, Rishi has written a piece in The Telegraph saying that he will meet all seven of the DUP's demands in this new deal. But most people expect the real bit that sticks in the Unionist craw, that of ECJ jurisdiction over Northern Ireland, will continue under Rishi's deal. And that would almost certainly be unacceptable for the DUP and Brexiteers like Steve Baker and the members of the ERG. But the Ramonas and Labour want the deal, any deal, ramrodded through as quickly as possible, and the more control the EU has over Northern Ireland as a result, the better, as far as they're concerned. 
After all, UK sovereignty means nothing to them. And then there's the matter of parliamentary scrutiny and a vote on the New Deal. From what Rishi Sunak said during the last PMQs and what Dominic Raab told Sophie Ridge on Sky, there might not be a proper vote. And why not? Because it would expose the huge split in the Tory party and it would also be very embarrassing to Sunak if he has to rely on Labour votes to get his deal through. And that's why Keir Starmer's team are so keen for the chance of a vote. It's all about party politics, not what's actually best for Northern Ireland. And given what Sunak appears to be doing with Northern Ireland, you have to wonder about his motives too. And talking about Labour, we now have four Labour Party parliamentarians under the spotlight for failing to declare their interests in a Labour Party funding organisation. Yes, the four are directors of the Lionel Cook Memorial Fund that helps finance their party. And in Companies House Records, it said the fund's principal activity is to assist the Labour movement by providing donations. And the responses from the four directors and their supporters are lots of apologies for oversights. Or that as they're not paid for doing it, it doesn't matter. Or that for MPs, it's not technically a requirement until March the 1st, this coming Wednesday. But these sorts of directorships do give people influence. But maybe they don't want to be identified as party money grubbers. And why not just declare the lot and be done with it? And had this been Tory politicians, it would be wall-to-wall -wall screeched resignation and investigation demands from Labour. Now the four of them are MPs Jess Phillips and Wes Streeting, as well as two peers of the realm, Lord Faulkner and Lord Sawyer. Richard. Hello, so here I am at Hay Bluff. Behind me are the uh, Black Mountains, where the opening scenes of American Werewolf in London were filmed. And just behind me, down below, is the uh, small border town of Hay on Wye, which is um, a very interesting place. You get the Hay on Wye Liter Literature Festival, which is filled with some of the most annoying people you could ever imagine on planet Earth. Anyway, last night there was an earthquake in Wales. Indeed, there was. Beds shook for the first time in years. Women screamed for the first time in years. It was a terrible thing that happened indeed. But there we go. That's what happens when you live in a, a country which is known for having earthquakes. Actually, we're not known for having earthquakes, but yeah. Terrible. One of the things that really uh, you know, upset me was there's a house that's shaking and you think, OK, that's a little tremor. But what about those people in, in Turkey and in Syria? My goodness, the fear they must have felt. I mean, you read in the social media comments now of people saying how absolutely terrified they were by it. And that was just of a, a small little earth tremor, effectively, or a small quake, quake. Nothing compared to what they went through. And as if by magic, here I am at Hay Castle in Hay on Wye itself. And I thought this would be a very apt place to say what I'm about to say. The fact is that uh, someone who used to frequent this place quite a lot uh, Stephen Fry has now been, well, pretty much cancelled again himself because of his comments, recent comments which have been viewed as uh, misogynistic. So I think, oh, OK, well, you can't say anything these days, chaps, or ladies, ladies and gentlemen and what else you wish to identify as. You really can't. It, it, it's got to the point now where Sense has all gone. All, all forms of sense have gone. You have to now mould yourself into this new groupthink that is literally toxic. My goodness, what have we done? What, have, what, what world will our, will our children inherit? I fear for them, honestly I do.